So today I want to talk about Giphy. Um, if you're not familiar with it, Giphy is a great website. You can find animated GIFs to post and use for whatever purpose you like. Now, Giphy also has an API. So if you head over to their developer section, so developers.giphy.com, you can create an account and then for completely nothing, completely free, you can create API keys. You just have to click on the button here to create an API, fill in a name and a description, say which one of the SDKs you want to use. And now there is an SDK and an API. The SDK provides a lot more features, but what I'm going to be doing today is just the API. So you can quite simply from a web page make a request and get back images, titles, details about the images. And the images can be brought back in many different sizes. So we're going to do that. Uh, I've got an API key here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that API key to build a little application. It's just going to be this. It's a web page with a search search box. So I type something in here. Let's say Deadpool, and click Go. And this is the URL that it's going to search. So it's going to send a request off to that API. It's going to bring back a whole bunch of JSON data for me. And then I'm going to add the images and the titles onto the page. Okay, so simple enough. Let's go take a look at our web page. So there's a link to this code. The uh, finished version of this code is going to be in the description down below. So you can grab your own copy of that. You can edit it, play around with it. Here's the API key that I created just for this video. Um, it's going to be gone before this video is released. So you will need to go and register and get your own API key for this to work. Okay. All I'm doing here in my JavaScript is I'm waiting for the DOM content loaded event to happen. So the web page is loaded and then I'm going to add a click listener onto the button. So in the HTML, we have a form which has a label, an input field and a button. When the person clicks on the button, it submits the form or it tries to submit the form. The click event fires first. That's going to call our script. We call EV prevent default to stop the page reloading. We don't want a page to reload because then we won't ever see any content. We're going to be making HTML requests or HTTP requests rather to the API, getting back some content. And that is how we're going to load the content on the page. If the page reloaded, we'd never see this content. So uh, search, that is the input field up here. We're getting its value, trimming off any extra spaces, and then we're just appending it to the end of this URL. This is all you have to do. HTTPS API.giphy.com. It will work over HTTP as well if you want. Um, V1 GIFs search. There's a whole bunch of endpoints. Actually, if you go to the website um, inside of here, if you go to the docs, you'll see here's the Giphy API, the Giphy SDK. Inside the API, there's a quick start guide right here and they have a code sample here. Now, unfortunately, the code sample they've got for JavaScript is written with jQuery, which you should be avoiding at all costs. But at this point, jQuery is done. Don't use jQuery. I'm not going to be using it in my, my example. I'm going to show you how to write it with just plain vanilla JavaScript. Uh, the API endpoints, you can see there's a whole bunch here that we can use. So search endpoint. Uh, trending, you want to see the trending videos, you want to get a random video, um, you want to get GIFs by their endpoint, you want to upload an endpoint. So there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do here. I'm just going to be talking about the search one to start with. Here's that URL. Now there are GIFs and there's stickers. Uh, stickers are kind of the animated little drawings. GIFs. They're, they tend to be clips out of movies, TV shows, uh, things that people have filmed. Now we have here, these are the request parameters. These are the things that you would add on to the end of this URL. So you'd put a question mark at the end here and then say API underscore key, all in lowercase, equals whatever your API key is. And then an ampersand. And then Q equals what's the string that you're looking for. They have as an example here, cheeseburgers. Limit, this is the number of results you're going to get back. Offset, let's say I wanted records 10 to 20. I could say I wanted 10 records starting at number 10 would be the two numbers I provide. That would give me 10 through 20. 
uh, or 10 through 19 rather. Uh, rating. So this is whether it's G, PG, PG-13, or R-rated, just like movies. Uh, language, if there's uh, specific languages you want things to come back as. And we don't need the, uh, the random ID here. Okay, then when it returns a response, so we do our AJAX call to the server, what we get back inside of our JSON file, there's three main properties, data, pagination and meta. Meta basically is just saying it was a successful response. It'll give you the, uh, if there's an error code, it'll be in here. Uh, if it's a 200 response, we're good to go. Data, this is going to be where we find the title and the different versions of the images. Uh, pagination, this will tell you how many records in total there were possible. So if you provided different numbers up here, it'll say, okay, this is how many you could have gotten. You're on page number X of Y and so on. All right, so let's build our little example here. Um, we're taking this URL. There's the API key equals, and there's my variable that I created up here. This is my API key that I'm putting inside of here. Limit equals one. I just want one record to come back. That's all I need. And Q equals that's going to be the query. That's what they're typing into this form. So that is what I'm going to append on the end here. So I get the value from the form and then I take the URL and I concatenate onto the end of it whatever they typed inside the form. And that's what we're writing out here. There's the URL. So I want to actually get this. We're going to call the fetch method. There's going to be a couple of thens first one is going to get the response, the second one is going to handle the data, and then at the very end we're going to have a catch. Where we'll, we will just put a console.error for now. You should always put something in there for the user uh, on the web page itself, but for now I'm just going to have a catch there to handle the error. Okay, as with every fetch, when it comes back, we're going to be getting a JSON file. We want to extract the JSON text from that as an actual JavaScript object. So response, we're calling a uh, arrow function here, response.json. This is also an asynchronous thing, which is going to be handled by the promise. So this response, whenever we get it back, is going to be passed down to here. And this is going to be the actual content, the JSON content, the JSON object, everything. So remember, as we said before, we have a data property, a pagination property, and a meta property. We can write those out. So console.log, we'll say content.data. Console.log, and this will be the meta one, content.meta. Okay, so let's save that, take a look. Come in here. I'm searching for Deadpool again. And here we go. So there's the meta information. As you can see, there's not a lot inside of here. The message is okay. The status is 200. That's good enough. That tells us that everything worked. So good practice would be to check and make sure that inside the meta object you actually have a status 200. Uh, because the way the API is built, it's, it's very solid. So when you make a request, you pretty much guaranteed, unless you've got a network problem, you're pretty much guaranteed you're going to get a response. But if something went wrong on the server, we need to know, we want to know whether or not this worked, if we're getting the res response that we want. So come into the meta, check the status is 200. Now the data object, this is where we find the one or more objects that contain all the information we want. So here, you can see number zero, this is actually an array. The content has an array inside the data object. So content.data, data is an array. We want number zero out of that. And then inside of it, inside item zero from data, we have all these properties here. And our title is right down here, type. If you want to uh, check for things like whether it's an MP4 or a WEPI or a GIF, you can do that inside of here. Here's the rating. You can check for that as well. Images is also an object with a whole bunch of possible values here. You can see all the different versions of the images. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the downsize. So 
content.data square brackets number zero dot images dot downsized and inside downsized there's a URL property this is the one that we're going to use to actually display it there's also a downsize still so if you want to display sort of a, a fixed thumbnail version of it and then when the person clicks on it you start to play the actual animated one it gives you that option as well so there's downsized still and the downsized the downsized will be the animated one all right so let's add that inside of here so we've got the data we've got the content now what we want to do is we want to actually build some HTML so let's create a uh, a figure element a image element and a figure caption so we'll do a figure we'll create an image and our fig caption Now you can create whatever HTML you want, but for my example, this is how I'm going to do it. Now the image is going to have a source, and the source value for the image is going to be our content with that data property, and we want number zero from inside of there. And then right here, the images dot downsized dot URL. There we go. The alt text, that's much higher up on the chain. We just want to get the title. And we're going to put the same thing inside of our figure caption. So we'll set its text content to content.data number zero dot title. There we are. Now let's just put this all together. So we're going to say the figure, a pen child. We're going to put the image inside of there. And then we're going to also put in the figure caption. Now we want to put our figure onto the page. And where are we going to put it? Well, let's take a look at the HTML. We have a div here with a class out. This is where I'm going to stick them all inside of here. So let out equal document dot query selector. There we go. So we're getting that div. And with this, without, what I'm going to call is insert adjacent element. Now I'm going to use this instead of a pen child because I always want to put the new one at the very top. I don't want the user to have to scroll every time they search down to the bottom of the list to see the latest one. So I'm going to put this after begin. And if you haven't used this before, I've got a video on that. I'll put the link down in the description for you too. And there we go. So we're adding the figure inside of this div, but as the first element inside of it. So after every search, it's going to be the first thing that we see. There we go. There's that pool and there's the title down below. I want to search for something else. There's Hobbit. Kittens. Everybody loves kittens. There we go. Puppies. Now you may notice here that after every one of these, I'm having to double click here to erase that. So this would be a good thing to do inside of this function. When we add the image, we should also clear out this form. It makes it much more usable for the user. So let's jump in here and do that as our final step. So document dot query selector. We'll slide up here. Search is the ID that we want. Dot value equals empty string. There we go. So we've emptied it out now. Deadpool, that worked. Can't seem to spell Hobbit this morning. There we go. Kittens. It's shark week, so let's put some sharks. And there we go. And I've got a little bit of CSS up at the top of the HTML file as well to allow for some dynamic sizing of these. But there we have it. And that's how you use the Giphy API. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the uh, comments down below. I will provide those couple of links in the description for you. And I encourage you to go on and take a look at the other endpoints here and play around with those. 
just so you can see how they all work. I think you'll uh, have a lot of fun doing it. All right, so that's everything. So as always, thanks for watching.